Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, Before we begin, we've got some announcements. Uh, Today, our Vikings game watch party, we had to cancel it. We had some issues with who could be here, so uh, sorry for those who prepped any chili. I know I'm already getting yelled at, but if If I can pass the blame off to anybody else, I'm just going to say it's my son Theo's fault, uh, because he's adorable enough that people can't get mad at him, so that'll work. Um, We have our faith and book study this Wednesday at uh, 5.30, so we hope to see you there. Trunk or treat. Who is excited for trunk or treat? Because I know I am. I love trunk or treat. I think it's so much fun. We are still looking for more people to host some trunks. Uh, So if you are available, please uh, consider doing that. And you can go all out on a theme, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. The kids really just care about the candy. Right? Candy! Yes. Uh, But that's just such a fun event that we can have all those kids here uh, to celebrate and have fun together in a safe place. Um, Another announcement, we have our middle school lock-in coming up this weekend. I am excited and terrified. We have like 30-some kids. It's going to be nuts. I'm just, I'm really excited. Uh, If you have a middle schooler who is interested, there is still a sign-up sheet out on the youth board. We add to our prayer list this week, Vern Radloff, and we also pray for the family of Lorraine Polzine, uh, who passed away this week. So we'll continue to pray for them and for everyone else on our prayer list. We also pray for our new members who are joining our saviors this week. Uh, Keep all of these people in your prayers this week. So with that said, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able, and we'll join in our gathering hymn. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We'll take a moment for reflection. Have mercy, O God. 
Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as a parent to a child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join in our hymn of praise. Almighty and most merciful God, your boundless goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our anthem. The first reading for today is from 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 3 and 7 to 15. 
Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. Armin. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpat, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Word of God, word of life. The second reading for today is Psalm 111. We will read the psalm responsibly. Hallelujah. Well, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds and your righteousness endures forever. You cause our greatest You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithful, uh, faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand for us forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's prize endures forever. Please stand if you're able for the gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 17. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and kids, come on up. <clears throat> come on up. So glad you're here today. How's everyone doing? I'm glad to hear that. Have a seat. We're so glad you're here. So today, Jesus is talking about being thankful or being grateful. And so today I thought at our message up here, we would think of a lot of different things we're thankful for, but we're going to do it according to color of M&Ms. So everyone gets some M&Ms today. I mean, it is New Member Sunday, so I thought it'd be fun to have a treat for all the kids. So today we're going to say thank you, God, because we're thankful, or another word for that is grateful, for everything God gives us. So there's blue M&Ms in here. And so for blue, I want you to think of something you're thankful for that's really big. What are you thankful for that's really big? Water. Water is really big, like a lake or the ocean. Yeah, so water is something really big. You guys might have other things too, and you can do this in your pews or at home. Okay, now there's brown M&Ms in here too, and I thought something small, something tiny you're thankful for. Little ponds? Little ponds? Yeah, little ponds. You know what? We need water. It's very important. A little puddle of mud. Anything else we're thankful for that doesn't have to do with water and is little? Um, a seed. A yeah. seed? Oh. Mice. Mice. Okay, some people are more thankful for mice than others. <laughs> okay, for the, there's green M&Ms in here and something outside. It doesn't have to be the color green, but something outside that you're thankful for. Trees. I'm thankful for trees, too. We'll do one more. Grass. Grass. Okay. Now something orange. And again, it doesn't have to be orange, but we have orange. Oh, and I said something orange. An animal. An animal you're thankful for. And it doesn't have to be orange. Any animal you're thankful for. Uh, Lila. Your cat. An elephant. Yes. I'm thankful for elephants, too. They're so interesting. What are you thankful for? The, a tree. Okay. One more animal. Cows because we get steaks out of them. And milk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then there's red M&Ms in here. So I was thinking we should be say, thankful for somebody who loves us. Who are you thankful for that loves you? Your mom. What did you say, Theo? Your mom. Your family. Yeah, um, red is the color of your blood. And red's the color of your blood. And yep, that's very true. Okay, now the last color is yellow. And so for yellow, I thought we'd say something that makes us smile that we're thankful for. What makes you smile? Friends. Having friends makes you smile. Yeah, and, your, and my baby. Your baby, Eloise, makes you smile? Oh, that's nice. Okay, we'll do one more thing that makes you smile. What makes you smile? Did you say biking? 
Oh, I thought you said Vikings. Viking and Vikings can make us smile. All right. So we have so many things to be thankful for, and this is just a fun way to think of all sorts of different things that we can be thankful for. And remember that it is God that gave us all of these wonderful gifts. So let's have a prayer today. You can repeat after me. Dear Lord, thank you for all of your gifts, big and small, inside and outside. Thank you for people who love us, and thank you for you for loving us. Amen. You may be seated, but everyone gets some M&Ms. So would one of my acolytes help pass out the M&Ms? So everybody can get a bag of M&Ms before you sit down. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And kids, you can stand up and go get one of the M&Ms from Nolan there. Thank you for helping. Super. You can just put that in the pew with you, Nolan. So there is nothing like the vibrant fall colors to remind us of God's gift of creation, is there? But then again... There's nothing like the first snowfall that covers the gray with the glistening white snow that makes us thankful for God's creation. Or else in spring, that first blooming tulip that makes us thankful. Or in that, that summer day when everything is just luscious green and the sun is shining and you don't need to wear a jacket and you're just, oh, you're in awe of God's creation. It almost seems like God is saying to us in the change of the seasons, pay attention. Pay attention to all of the gifts I have given you because we so easily slide into complacency or we simply take for granted all of the gifts that God has given us that surround us each and every day. And the change of seasons, especially in Minnesota, seem to say, hey, pay attention. Look what I've given you. And when we do, when we notice, when we pay attention, and we see God's gifts, when we see God's grace, it seems like we're kind of drawn out of ourselves and drawn out of the daily grind, and then we're in awe. We're in awe of God and what God has given us, and then we're grateful. We're thankful. Jesus is teaching us something about this today because Jesus is teaching us about gratitude and how important gratitude is for people of faith in the story about the ten lepers. So today I have four key points or four learnings from this brief passage in the Gospel of Luke. And the first is what I just said is that gratitude requires paying attention or we might miss it or we might take it for granted. So Jesus is walking to Jerusalem in the region between Samaria and Galilee, and he encounters these ten men with leprosy. Ten men who, because of their illness, were socially, religiously, and physically unclean. And so they lived in total isolation. They were people Jesus wasn't even supposed to interact with. And so keeping their distance from Jesus, they called out to Jesus for mercy. And Jesus says, go and show yourselves to the priests. Because the priests would be the ones who could certify that the leprosy was gone, which would mean now the lepers would be free to join the community again. They could be with their families. They could go to the temple. They could do all the things we like to do when we live in the community. And so the ten went on their way. But one of them, just one of them, a Samaritan, when he noticed he was healed, he turned around and praised and thanked Jesus. Now remember, they were all made well, but only one of them is really paying attention, and only one of them is in awe 
of the gift of healing that he has received. And so he returns to Jesus, praising and thanking him. You know, it reminds me of those aha moments we have in nature, or the aha moments in particular I've experienced in the boundary waters, when the beauty and the peace cause me to turn to God in praise and thanksgiving. But see, you have to be paying attention. And maybe that means sometimes we really all need to slow down. Maybe it means we need to be more intentional in being present in the moments of our lives where God is giving us these gifts. Or maybe it means taking our eyes off all of the bad news and surrounding ourselves and being inundated with bad news and negative and instead focus sometimes on all that is good and all of the gifts. Whatever it is that you need to do in this scripture, it reminds us we need to pay attention. Pay attention to all that God is doing in this world. Because gratitude, to be grateful, requires paying attention and noticing God's grace and God's gifts. The second thing is that faith and gratitude, they go hand in hand. You see, people of faith, we are people who are called to be grateful or invited to be grateful. Now, I'm someone who can shed some tears watching a Hallmark card commercial. Maybe you are too. You know, those touching cards where someone is giving a parent or a neighbor a card and it's very touching and they thank them. Those are really wonderful, and I think it's important to tell people we're grateful for them. But this praise today and this gratitude is deeper than that. The lepers saw he was healed, but it was deeper than physical healing because this leper understood he had been seen by God. He had mattered to God. A leper and a Samaritan had mattered. And so before he's even thankful, he acknowledges and praises God, the one who listens, the one who is the gift giver, the one who said to that man, you are a beloved child of God. You are worthy of my love and my attention and my care. And when you experience that, you can't help but turn back and praise and worship the one who has given you the gift of healing, the gift of paying attention, the gift of saying you matter. When we gather on Sunday, you know, this is what we're doing, part of what we're doing. We return here on Sundays to God, and we worship and praise God, the one who has given us so many gifts, the one who's healed us. If we think of Sundays only as, well, what am I going to get out of it this week? What's in it for me? We really miss something. We miss what the psalmist wrote. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart because of all the gifts we've been given. The leper praised Jesus with his whole self, laying at the feet of Jesus. We return here each week and we praise God. That's part of what our do we're doing with our whole heart through our worship. So faith and gratitude go hand in hand because of the way God loves us. Third is gratitude changes us. Now remember, all the ten lepers were made well. Yet Jesus said to the one who returned to him, your faith has made you well. Like, wait a minute, wasn't he already healed and well? But this healing Jesus is talking about went beyond the leprosy. The ten were all blessed with physical healing. It's the same with us. God blesses us whether or not we praise and thank God. You know, whether or not we notice, we receive these blessings. We're blessed with fall beauty whether or not we notice and give thanks to the gift giver. We're blessed by doctors and scientists and farmers and mechanics and teachers. Well, the list goes on all the ways we're blessed. And we receive those blessings from those people, whether or not we thank God for working through them to make a difference for us. Do you see what I mean? We receive blessings, as did all ten lepers. 
But when we turn to God and praise and thank God for that gift, something else happens. The one healed leper in returning and praising and thanking Jesus had another kind of healing. He was made whole. For the words Jesus used today in the gospel, it says your faith has made you well, can also be translated as your faith has made you whole. You are now again who God made you to be. That's what praising the gift giver and thanking God does to us. It makes us whole. So don't hear what Jesus says to the leper who returned as saying, well, you know, if you have enough faith and you do it just right, you're going to be healed physically. That's not what this means. Instead, it is that your faith, that is, in noticing and responding to God's grace and gifts, that makes you whole in a different way. It made you, makes you into what God intended you to be all along. Now, that can sound too good to be true, but yet, I mean, a lot of research has been done on gratitude in recent years, and there's evidence that gratitude does things like reduces stress. It says that grateful people are more hopeful, that it can even help your immune system. It's like Jesus knew something 2,000 years ago that now people are researching and discovering today. Our well-being, and I think we all know this, is more than our physical health. And that's not minimizing the physical challenges people face with illness. It is saying that even in illness and all of life's challenges, being grateful to God, praising God, it does change us. It gives us hope and it changes our daily life and how we experience it. Being grateful changes us. The fourth thing is that gratitude does take practice. We can look around and find many things wrong in this world, right? Or many things to complain about in our lives. And they are real things, worries and problems that are truly difficult. But it is a choice to also pay attention and return to God with praise and thanksgiving for the gifts and blessings we have been given. And that takes practice. It takes daily being conscientious of it and practicing gratitude. Whether it's writing a journal or putting things on a list each day, it is pr a practice to be grateful. All 10 lepers received the blessing of healing. Jesus never took that blessing back, but one chose to return to Jesus and lay himself at the feet of Jesus in praise to the one who gives us all gifts. And that man said, thank you. And he received another blessing, one of wholeness, one that fills your heart. You see, God hears us when we cry in pain. God notices us and our heartaches. And we can take all of that to God and know God cares. And then, too, we can remember the many blessings we've received in our lives and praise and thank God with our whole heart on a daily basis for all God has done for us and how that changes us but it takes practice. Now, I know sometimes it's hard to be grateful. I think about my parents going through the farm crisis and a tornado all at the same time in 1984. Faith and the practice of being grateful for the blessings that they had helped them to think about all of the gifts they had and not only about all they had lost. And believe me, they lost a lot. And was it easy for them? Absolutely not. Like you, like many of us, they experienced a lot of heartache and pain and suffering. Ufta. But see, they also experienced gratitude, which gave them, even in this crisis, a sense of wholeness and hope on some very dark days. For some of you right now, it may be some of those difficult, dark days. It may be difficult to even be grateful. Maybe you're overwhelmed by the circumstances in your life. That's okay. Gratitude is not a command. Gratitude is an invitation from God that God makes over and over again. 
So all these wonderful things about gratitude. Today, if it's too hard for you to be grateful, too difficult to be grateful, know that the day will come when you can be grateful. But in the meantime, we're going to give thanks to God in your place because that's what we do as the body of Christ, right? We're here for each other, and we can be grateful for that too. Praising God, the gift giver, and giving thanks and gratitude for all God has given us, it fills us. So this week, let's pay attention to the gifts of each day. And when we notice those gifts, let's turn to the gift giver God and praise and thank God. And know that when we do this, it does change us in ways beyond physical healing. And it gives us a sense of wholeness and hope. So practice gratitude each day this week. End the day thanking God for all God has given you and done for you. And like the psalmist, for each gift, may we say, Hallelujah, I give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Please stand as you're able. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite our new members forward. Do we have some new member families from... Yes, oh, yes we, we have do. <laughs> one of our 13 families with us Ooh. at first service, and the others will be at second service. Morning, you guys. You can just face us up here. <laughs> so with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, 
to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So sisters and brothers, our new members in, in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? And people of God, the people of our saviors, do you promise to support and pray for these new members and their life in Christ? So let us welcome these sisters and brothers and brothers in Christ to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And so I'd invite you to turn around. This is Adam and Trista Barca, Karen, Greta, and Corinne. And so let us welcome them to our saviors. And you may be seated. Stand as we join in the prayers of the church. In, gratity, in gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of God's creation. God of all hope, let us worship you with our whole heart. Help us to be changed by your gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Make us grateful for all that you have provided and bless us to show our gratitude in whatever way we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest, Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Build, uh, bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized for any reason. We give you thanks for the new members joining OSLC this morning. Bring them courage, excitement, and joy in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer. We pray especially for Rich, Bob, Audrey, Russ, Dixie, Joan, Brad, Sharon, Ken, Anne, Dave, George, Carol, Annette, Pam, Sharon, Marion, Ted, and Vern. We also pray for the family of Lorraine Paulzine as they mourn her passing. And we pray for those that we lift up now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to share the peace of God with those around you. Peace, everybody.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us us from the time of trials and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen the meal is ready christ is the host come as you are all are welcome you may be seated
Please stand for the communion blessing in prayer. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Soli Deo Gloria. With grateful hearts, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.